Hello and welcome everyone. Today we'll be dealing with the mitochondrial dysfunction in sepsis. Mitochondria, as we all know, is vital for the energy generation in the cell. It's also important for the redox balance, the calcium buffering and the apoptosis initiation. It has two membranes, the outer mitochondrial membrane and the inner mitochondrial membrane. The mitochondrial respiratory chain consists of five complexes, one through five, within the inner mitochondrial membrane. The complexes one through four create a mitochondrial membrane potential, which is utilized by the complex five for the energy generation. Now, how is mitochondria interlinked with sepsis? It is actually very, very crucial in the pathogenesis of sepsis with mitochondrial damage being reported in both lab studies as well as clinical investigation. Mitochondrial dysfunction in sepsis leads to energy deficiency and activation of pathways that alter the cell function. Damaged mitochondria contributes to the inflammatory response via signaling pathways in the sepsis. So there have been a lot of therapeutic advances where we are targeting the mitochondria and seeing it as a potential to reduce the sepsis induced inflammation, organ failure and mortality. Improved mitochondrial quality is emerging as a promising strategy for sepsis management. So how does mitochondria get damaged in sepsis? So initially we have some clinical data, though limited, they indicate that there is some kind of a mitochondrial dysfunction which is seen in sepsis. That is peripheral blood mononuclear cells from septic shock patients show that their mitochondrial ATP synthesis activity is reduced. Respiratory complexes are inhibited in these cells of septic patients without shock or even organ failure, suggesting that there can be an early mitochondrial impairment even when I am not having an organ failure. Platelets from these patients exhibit lower activity of the mitochondrial NADH, complex 1, 1 by 3 and 4. Muscle tissue from septic patients show mitochondrial dysfunction and ATP depletion. This is also seen in cardiac patients uh, or cardiac muscles of the non-survival patients. So, uh, these all evidence we have in the actual patients where in post-mortem we have seen this or in the biopsy we have found that there is some kind of a mitochondrial dysfunction in sepsis. Now these theories were put to test in animal models. So uh, sepsis models have been developed that is cecal ligation and puncture which develops a sepsis like condition in the models. But we have conflicting data existing showing that unchanged or increased mitochondrial activity in some cases. This can be due to the variability in the septic insult, the timing and assessment method with which we are trying to find out the mitochondrial dysfunction. Now there are impact of circulating substances. In B2 assays used in isolated cells of or mitochondria may not accurately reflect the in vivo conditions since they lack the circulatory cytokines. So serum from septic patients significantly has shown to reduce the endothelial cell mitochondrial respiration compared to adult controls, highlighting the role of circulating substances in regulating the mitochondrial function. So then we have normalization methods, that is various normalization techniques can influence the mitochondrial activity results. Like uh, the study by Fredrickson shows that 60% decrease in the complex one activity in costal muscles mitochondria of septic patient when normalized for the muscles dry weight. So the, no difference was found when the normalized to citrated synthetase activity which also decreased during sepsis indicating the importance of methodological considerations. So the overall summary of this part is we have evidence that in vivo there are changes which are seen in patients who are having sepsis in the mitochondria. However, in vitro, in models, we have not yet replicated those things. But then as from these methods, we have seen that the in vitro methods have their and models have their limitations. So we must take everything into account. And as far as the evidence is there till now, we are for sure taking this 
into our consideration that mitochondria is very vital for sepsis pathogenesis and targeting mitochondria and its health can be an important therapeutic target in sepsis management. So let's first see what are the mechanisms by which the mitochondria gets affected during sepsis. The first and the most important one is the reactive nitrogen or reactive oxygen burst. Nitric oxide produced in the invisible nitric oxide synthesis is a major trigger from the mitochondrial damage. This is converted into more reactive nitrogen species when impaired mitochondrial respiration occurs. Studies show that inducible nitric oxide synthesis plays a crucial role in the mitochondrial damage with increased expression leading to reduced mitochondrial complex activity in sepsis. Sepsis stimulates the formation of uh, oxygen species primarily to the NADPH oxidase and the mitochondrial electron transport chain. The imbalance between these two leads to lipid, protein and nucleic acid damage. Nitric oxide binds to complex 4, inhibiting its function and reacts with the reactive oxygen species to form toxic derivatives which further impair the mitochondrial complexes as well as the enzymes. So here you can see these are the reactive nitrogen species, nitric oxide, nitrates and nitric dioxide and the uh, reactive oxygen species, the superoxide anions, the hydrogen peroxide and the various radicals and they combine also to form various free radicals, these will result in the damage to the mitochondria. This is the most important method of damage to the mitochondria. There will be lipid damage to the membrane, there will be nuclear, da nuclear damage and there will be also damage to the enzymes. So there is one more damage that is the mitophagy. Now mitophagy selectively degrades damaged mitochondria. This is a common process which happens in all cells normally. The mitochondria tend to get damaged over time. So this damaged mitochondria is removed from the cells by the process that is called mitophagy. But this process is impaired in the sepsis. In immune cells, the mitophagy inhibition occurs during inflammation with caspases cleaving the Parkins and the degraded pink one which prevents the mitophagy. Now, inflammatory signals and the lack of AMP activated protein kinase activation contributes to the reduced mitophagy. However, mitophagy can also be activated by various other cytokines as a part of feedback mechanism to limit the inflammation. Mitophagy is enhanced in various organs during sepsis including the heart, kidney and liver as evidenced by reduced mitochondrial mass and protein levels, mainly mediated by this pink Parkin pathway. So now that we know there are two main mechanisms of damage that is the reactive nitrogen and reactive oxygen species and the impaired mitophagy that is the damaged mitochondria which is because of the reactive species is not getting removed by mitophagy and it continues to grow inside the cell. The next is what is the dynamics of mitochondria during the sepsis. So there is a process called fusion and fission. With this, the mitochondria basically in, removes its uh, structural in, damages. Fusion promotes the formation of interconnected networks, preserving the mitochondrial genome and the proteome. Fission allows for the removal of the damaged parts of the mitochondria. During sepsis, excessive fission occurs to the mitochondrial fragmentation in various tissues, contributing to a dysfunction. Inhibition of the mitochondrial fission using inhibitors like MDV1 and P110 has shown protective effects in sepsis models by restoring the mitochondrial function and reducing apoptosis. Now there is one more thing that is the mitochondrial permeability transition. MPT occurs due to the formation of mitochondrial permeability transition pores which disrupts the mitochondrial function. So various these enzymes are affected over here. The main mechanism is the oxidative damage due to these, to these uh, enzymes. Pharmacological inhibition of the MPT using cyclosporine A has shown potential in reducing the mitochondrial dysfunction in sepsis. There is also gas dermin that is GSDM mediated me membrane permeability this involves in pyroptosis which cleaves the caspases during inflammation to form pores in the mitochondria and cell membrane. These active fragments and target mitochondrial membranes contribute to the anti-mitochondrial permeability in sepsis. It prevention blinds to the cardiolipin on the outer mitochondrial membrane which externalizes during the oxidative induced stress. 
So these are the various mechanisms of how the function of the mitochondria is getting affected in sepsis. So these are the methods that we have shown. The fission and fusion occurs. The fission helps in improving the mitochondrial uh, genome and everything. However, the fission is increased in the sepsis and inhibiting this by the enzymes has shown to improve sepsis. Now this is the uh, mitophagy, the pink and parkin method. We are trying to target various of these proteins to reduce the improve the mitophagy. So if you want to see how does this mitochondria result in inflammation and the NLRP3 generation, you, here you have the cell free mitochondrial DNA which has two places where it can act. It can go to the TLR9 and the G gas pathway. In the C gas pathway, it will ultimately result in the formation of the sting which will attach on the Golgi apparatus and produce a spec. This spec is the place where the NLRP3 goes and increases the inflammatory process. Similarly, the TLR6 will result in releasing of the PAMPs and DAMPs and also activates the release of the inflammatory cytokines. The mitochondrial damage results in cardiolipin procaspase release which go to the MAVs where the NLRPs are released and this NLRP again goes to the spec which has been created in the Golgi apparatus increasing the inflammatory process. So overall it is a complex interaction between the mitochondrial DNA which is oxidized by the ROS resulting in its increased affinity to stimulate the NLRP3, this NLRP3 amplifies the inflammation. So now that we know how the mitochondria is damaged, how it is actually producing this much of inflammation, now let us see how can we target these things for therapeutic purposes. The first is antioxidants. Because of the major pathway that we saw is oxidative damage, antioxidants are the major things that we are going to look for for treating this condition. Since uh, so the common mitochondria specific antioxidants include mito Q, mito V3 and mito Tempole. First is mito Q. Mito Q is a conjugate of ubiquinone and lipophilic cation PPP plus. It is not FPA approved as of now and it basically acts by protecting the mitochondria during sepsis. It suppresses the pro-inflammatory cytokines and reduces the inflammation. So delayed treatment with this provides comparable outcomes to immediate treatment making it a good candidate for clinical application considering that it also helps in delayed management. Next is Mito V3. It is a modified form of vitamin 3 which has been attached to the TPP plus which will help us in targeting mitochondria. It has been used in pneumonia models in rat species which has improved cardiac function similar to the Mito Q. It prevents organ damage as well. Finally, mitotempol, it is a mitochondrial targeting antioxidant which has been linked with the TPP plus again and it has been used in rat model of fecal peritonitis where it has improved the temperature as well as the survival rates. Next we have NAD plus, it is crucial for the redox metabolism, immune response, aging and the DNA repair. NAD plus depletion occurs during sepsis making it a potential therapeutic target. NAD plus precursors such as nicotinamide mononucleotide and nicotinamide riboside have shown promise in preclinical studies uh, of sepsis, mitigating mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative stress and inflammation. NAD plus helps elevate the oxidative stress partly by activating the sirtuins such as SIRT3 and mitochondria localizing sirtuins pro help a protective role in mitochondrial health. Finally, we have non-oxidants. In this we have urolithin A. It is a natural compound known to in induce mitophagy and in vitro studies show that it protects the cardiomyocytes from LPS induced damage. Next we have the MDIV1. This we have already seen that this inhibits the mitochondrial fission and helps us in protecting the mitochondria and it has been used in models and has shown. Next we have cyclosporin A. It has got a unique mechanism. It is approved as an immunosuppressant uh, but here basically it acts by interacting with the MPTP where it reduces the damp release. It has shown to protect the organ dysfunction and mortality in various septic models. 
Next is the utility of metformin in sepsis. It is commonly used for type 2 diabetes, we all know. In animal models, it enhances the bacterial clearance in the lungs. Now, in retrospective studies in human patients has shown mixed results in the use of metformin for sepsis. Ongoing trials aim to further assess its role in septic patients. The pharmacological mechanism over here is it regulates the inflammation through the AMPK dependent and independent pathways. The metformin activates the AMPK and suppresses the mTOR1, which promotes autophagy and reduces NLRP3 inflammasome activation. The AMPK also phosphorylates the PGC1 alpha promoting mitochondrial biogenesis and reduces the reactive oxygen species. It has got dose dependent effect. The low dose activates AMPK through lysosomal pathway and the high dose inhibits complex 1 of the respiratory chain leading to the ATP shortage. Additional anti-inflammatory uh, effects are also seen by suppressing interleukin 6. Recently it has been discovered that metformin's anti-inflammatory activity is mediated by ZEB1. So, these are the various therapeutic agents which we are using for the antioxidants that is Mito-Q, Mito-V3 and Mito-Tempol will act on the reactive oxygen species. Likewise, NAD plus will act on the reactive oxygen species. As we have seen, the MBIV1 will act on the fission. By reducing fission, it will reduce the mitochondrial damage. Cyclosporin will act on the MPTP by reducing and will reduce the damage to the uh, mitochondria and metformin as we have seen has multiple pathways where it will act and help us in improving the mitochondria. Thank you for your patience.